Are you comfortable? Are you, are you okay? You good? Right, you right. sure? You, don't get excited now. No, I was you know, stumping a little. But you know we're on the air. Huh? You know we're on. Hey, hey. No, we're hey over there. Hey. Number two. See, this is Tommy's first time going on camera, in case you didn't know oh, that. Oh, we're really on? Yeah, we're really on. Oh, we're you want to really say on. something? Hey. Hey, Woodstock. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, it's not often that I get this chance to actually, you know, I feel like you're, you're Ed McMahon. Is, oh, so I thought you were Ed McMahon. That's what I just said. I said, I feel oh. like you're Ed McMahon. No. <laughs> no, I feel like I'm Ed McMahon. There you go. And hey. you're Johnny Carson. There you go. Of course, you're a lot grayer than Johnny Carson. But, hey, but that's, you that. know, but um, listen, you know, I was telling everybody out there that this is a special show. Yeah. This you want to tell us a little about what we're doing? Yeah. Um, this was a, a show that um, Rich Rifkin produced. Uh, it's a, it was a Woodstock revival show. It was held at the Sands Point uh, Preserve in Sands Point at the old Guggenheim Castle. A magnificent, magnificent place. I mean, breathtaking views right on the sound overlooking Connecticut. Um, I didn't know it was the Guggenheim. Yeah. For those of you who don't, because I, I got to be honest with you, and it's not that I live in a shell by no means, but the Guggenheim, what did they do? They had a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, that's about I, all no, you I think, know. I think he was an entrepreneur. Did you I think see he was into place? railroads. I think he was into everything. And then, you know, the Guggenheim Museum. I and, know. Uh, but I mean, it's just, it's, it's crazy. It, it was the first time that I've ever, ever been there. Yeah, me too. And, you know, and I've passed it a million times, but I've never, I used I to wanna, live in I want to thank Rich Rifkin and obviously everybody who made that concert um, possible because it, it was just, for me, I, I, didn't go to Woodstock. Of course, I'm much younger than you, Tommy, as you a know. A lot, yes. And um, I, I didn't have that chance to, uh, to go there, you know, and to see all those people with the tie-dye shirts. You know, Rich, I, I, we don't know how to thank you. You and, obviously, all the people that helped put this thing together. It was just phenomenal. Well, the thing, the thing that, that, that made me very happy, because I was at Woodstock, but what made me happy was that the, uh, that the youth that were there was so into it. And it right. was like... You know, that music, for some reason, will just always be around, and it's never going to go away. And you saw by the reaction of, I mean, the people. I mean, when uh, Morago came out, my God, I mean, the place went crazy. You know, I it mean, was insane. They, every band was excellent. Every band was excellent. The first band, was that Jellyfish? Was it Jellyfish? No, that's the bar that oh. helped sponsor this. You know, it, I got to be Jelly honest. Jelly Jam? Or Jelly, yeah. I, uh, you know, I didn't remember half the bands that were there. All I knew is that when we looked out over that crowd, and what, what I found to be absolutely remarkable was 
There was something that you told me a long time ago about Woodstock, and it, it always seemed to stuck with me that all those hundreds of thousands of people that got together and they were touching elbows and touching shoulders, that there was no animosity, right. there was no um, you know, arguments, there was no, hey, listen, you're in my space, right. you know, you're this right. and that. And I found that to somewhat filter into this, it this event at Sands It was Point. a great vibe there. there was, it was a very peaceful vibe, and I don't mean peace, peace, peace. I mean just people getting along with people. Everybody was dancing with one another. Uh, the music was there. I mean, it was the atmosphere. You know, it was a gathering. It was a gathering of good people that just wanted something simply as just having a good time without having any trouble and uh, listening to some great music. And it was, I mean, Rich did a phenomenal job. His daughter even opened up the show, which I thought was an amazing, well, she was great. Elena, yeah. And she thought, you know, she's, she, we're going to have her here on the show. Yeah, I know. And I think we're going to have her on the, on the Maverick Soul Hour. I, I believe You so. know, yeah. she is just an absolute incredible young upcoming singer. And a really great kid. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I found interesting was, as I was filming, and, you know, we, we tried to do this stream, you yeah. know, obviously around the world. And we had some glitches. It was the first time we attempted. The next time will be much better. But as I was sitting there and I was watching all these people, I saw, like you said, you know, the youth. There were, there were kids eight years old, six years old. I even saw like a two-year-old, a three-year-old yeah. in strollers. And, and they were just kind of like just grooving to the music. Yeah. That's they were, why I was telling they you, get that kid on film with the hat. She so, was beautiful. you know, my hat's off to Rich Rifkin and, uh, and his entire crew that put a, this together. It was a beautiful day. It was really, truly a very, very beautiful day. I yeah. mean, there's no other word to describe it. it. It went flawless and no arguments, no fighting, no nothing. There was no really, you know, drinking wasn't, you know, a big deal. I mean, it was mostly a lot of families. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it and was we had, we had the really opportunity was what to interview some been. great people. You know, I, I want to let you know that we will be getting Rich on the phone here shortly, and we're going to talk to him. Rich has got a series of concerts that are going on throughout Long Island this summer. And i got to tell you, if it's anything like this, what we experienced over at Sands Point, you people have got to make a, a point of it now to put that calendar date aside and get to one of these concerts. It, they're phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, even bring your family along because it, it has that. He had artists there painting. It was, you know, it was just a real calming atmosphere, but with good music to make, you know, you make you want to move and groove, know. you know what I mean? It, it was, was really, really pleasant and a, a, a del just a delightful day. Good people. We had some great people with us, uh, you know. Uh, we brought a, a big ringer in there for him, uh, Neville Chester's. Uh, now, for those I mean, of the people yeah. that are out there, that don't know who Neville Chester's is because, you know, the name in and of itself doesn't right. ring a bell. Well, Just real quick, Neville is who? Neville Chester's was the road manager for Cream, The Who, and Jimi Hendrix. He also worked on the Sgt. Pepper's album, with, uh, lived with Brian Epstein and worked on the Sgt. Pepper's album uh, with the Beatles. He would meet Paul McCartney every night. He worked with Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, James Taylor, Led Zeppelin. I mean... You name it. I mean, this guy worked with them. And, and we have been to many, many things with Neville where we go behind the scenes like B.B. King's or Jones Beach or Tanner Park or something with major world-class bands. And you could see these icons treat him like an icon. And it is like, it's humbling to see. You know, like you see, oh, there's, what's his, there's Roger Daltrey. And he'll come up and go, oh, Neville. You know, like it's, right. it's, uh, it's, 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 it's incredible wild. because... You know, the guy, is, he's, he's really done more than them, you know. I mean, outside of the music itself, he's traveled with the biggest and the best, and he's known them all personally. He's partied with them. He's done everything with them. You know, and just, just to let you know, uh, Madhouse TV, you know, it, it's bigger and bigger every day. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working hand-in-hand -hand with Rich throughout the summer, as well as other big festivals that are coming to Long Island. Please come to our tent, find us. We'd love to sit and talk with you. you have any ideas about a show, give us a call. But we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we are going to have live here on the phone, I wish you could have been in the studio, the guy that made this all happen. So stand by. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Madhouse TV. We'll be right back after this message. Hey, I'm Tom Mealy from the Harrison Law Group. You know, soft tissue injury, that's no joke. 
This is what we do. We're not new at this game. Don't waste valuable time going to firms who don't get it and can't do it. Call 1-800-INJURY-LAW. For professional motorcycle transport and towing, think Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Proudly serving all of Long Island, we feature expert handling and 24-7 service. So send a limo for your toy with Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Hmm. Uh, Ray, I don't know. Are you sure clicking this thing will get us online? Well, try dragging it. Hmm. Faster. You're just a mouse click away from a better way to rent movies. Blockbuster Total Access. Movies through the mail plus movies through the store. One low price. Here's the problem. We forgot to plug it in. Oh, don't even think about it. Get a free trial at your Blockbuster store or Blockbuster.com. Brooklyn's best locksmith and hardware. We have three of the largest showrooms of safes on display and in stock. You can see and touch them in person instead of browsing a catalog. We carry gun and rifle safes, burglary safes, jewelry safes, fire rated from a half hour to two hour. Famous name brands. We sell guard all. We sell AMSAC. The new AMSAC touchscreen. If you're ever in need of a safe, think Brooklyn's best locksmith and hardware. Right, Lockie? That's right, Alan. Okay, welcome back to Madhouse TV, and uh, today we're talking about Sands Point, uh, the big Woodstock festival that took place here a couple of weeks ago, and Tommy, we are, it is an extreme pleasure, we have Mr. Rich Rivkin on the phone. Rich, can you hear us? I can. Hey, guys, how you doing? Hey, Rich, how are you, buddy? Fantastic. Hey, I, I see how you guys are dressed, and I think I might be a little underdressed for the occasion. Sorry about that. <laughs> what are you telling me? Are, 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 are you in your sweatpants that I have those little in, hearts? I, I, I think he's I, in his tie-dye. wearing pants, as far as you know. Hey, Rich, uh, first and foremost, we want to thank you very much for uh, putting on this festival. It was, it was phenomenal. I know that it's, it's a tremendous amount of work. Can you tell us a little about what inspired you to do a Woodstock festival? You know, I've done festivals for the past uh, 12 years or so, and I, I have festivals of different themes. And, you know, this year I, I wanted to add something different that I hadn't done before. You know, I, I have a number of jam band themes, you know, from Grateful Dead and reggae uh, related. And it, it seemed to me that there would be a, a, a real demand for a, a Woodstock experience. Um, honestly, when, when I was planning the event, I wasn't thinking that we were going to get more than 4,000 people, that we'd reach capacity at the park, and that the park would have to turn people away halfway through the event. But that's what happened, and it's, it's my honor. It was great. And, you know, did you notice the vibe and the feel of the people uh, that were there that day? I mean, was it just, you know, Tommy and I and, and, and the crew, or did you get that same sensation that this was like going back in time? Well, it all of those things, Tom. It, it's definitely, it, it's, uh, it feels like it's a throwback to the old days. But, you know, it's, it's not something that's a, a novelty at, at the uh, festivals that I've been producing. Uh, you know, we started out in 2001 with the Elwood Stock Festival, and I did a, a decade of those festivals featuring some of the bands that uh, I'm featuring during the rest of this uh, season. And there was a, a very similar feeling of just of peace, and, and just kind of a, a tie-dye spirit. It was very family-friendly. Uh, you know, those events at Elwood Park uh, were not as large as, as what we did at Sands Point for Woodstock, but the vibe was actually pretty similar. And if you look at the crowd, it, it looked pretty similar as well. So th this is kind of a, of a theme that runs through my events by design. Tell us a little about, I know that other than Woodstock, uh, you've got, I think, uh, seven or eight more events coming up on Long Island. Actually, uh, a total of 10 events coming up on, on Long Island. Uh, the next one is uh, Sunday, June 30th. It's the Long Island Sound and Art Festival. It's the second time we're doing that festival at Vanderbilt Museum in Centerport, New York. And uh, in addition to that, there are uh, nine festivals after, the, after that one. And all these festivals are listed uh, in detail at, at the website, which is LI Music Festivals. 
Com, and, and I just want to—I just want to mention for you folks out there, in case you're not running to get a pen to write this down, uh, as a special uh, uh, courtesy to Rich, we will be uh, building into the Madhouse TV website a link that will be posted all summer long, which will have a hyperlink going directly to that page. So if you want to click on MadhouseTV.com, go to the hyperlink in the top right-hand corner. It'll say uh, summer festival uh, or whatever we want to, you know, decide to call. Rich, is there a name that you want to call this link? Uh, well, the, the, uh, the link to my website is limusicfestivals.com. Okay. And the, the website is it's Rich Rivkin Presents. Okay, so they'll be up in the corner of the website, uh, Long Island Festivals. Click it on, and that'll take you right over to Rich's site. Um, Rich, tell us a little about um, uh, a little series of, of, the, of the events, the 10 events that are actually coming up, because I know each one holds a special theme, correct? Um, yes, yes, they do. This coming one on June 30th, Long Island Sound and Art Festival, uh, features uh, three classic rock tribute bands. And uh, you'll find that uh, almost all the festivals uh, do feature uh, tribute bands. And uh, on the 30th uh, is Liverpool Shuffle doing a Beatles tribute. Uh, Reckoning is doing a Grateful Dead tribute. Then Black Dog is doing a Led Zeppelin tribute. Yeah, In yeah. To that, we have the very popular Stanton Anderson band. Great uh, band. Also, Teddy Kumpel Lupistra and Ilana Rifkin will also be performing. Terrific. That's that's a great little lineup there. Well, I got to oh, yeah. tell you, and and Madhouse TV will be at every one of those events. Fantastic. We look forward to that. Yeah. Uh, Rich, well, with uh, with no further ado, you know, we we put together this clip of the event that had taken place and. Uh, Again, it's, it's, it's been a, a thrill, you know, to, to actually work with you on these events. Madhouse is, is very happy to be part of that. And um, we'll be talking to you at the festival. Fantastic. Tom and Tom, thanks so much, guys. I appreciate it. Rich, no it's always a pleasure, my man. And I, it sounds like a great one. I know Black Dog is really good. And uh, I know your daughter is very good. And uh, it sounds like a good one. Fantastic. Thanks, brother. Okay. You're listening to Rich Rifkin here live on Madhouse TV. And now, with no further ado, what do you think, Tommy? You think you want to play the film? Roll it, baby. Let's roll that clip. Roll that clip. Whatever camera we're on right now. You ready for this? I'm ever ready. Just All right, Janine, hit it. We'll be right back after the video. Have a wonderful day. You know, Tommy, I got to tell you, it's not often that we get a chance to actually film for the first time live, and we're here at a Woodstock reunion in Sands Point. What gets better than that? I, you know what? I don't know. If you guys can see what's behind us here, we're on the, uh, I guess this is Sound. the Long Island Sound. That's Connecticut right there. And uh, we're here at, uh, at Sands Point. If you ever have an opportunity to get down here, you got to get down here and see this place. It's incredible. What's in store for us today? Well... Uh, we have a lot of bands coming in. We have, I, I know, uh, one of the bands that we just had on uh, my te television show last two weeks ago, the Santana Tribute Band is going to be here with Julio. Uh, that they're an amazing band, and uh, there's there's a bunch of great bands coming in, and uh, we're watching them unload. You're probably hearing them unload right now. The place is getting rived up, and uh, it looks like it's going to be a good day. It's a perfect weather, and uh, looks beautiful. I think, you know, uh, we were uh, talking to um, Rich Rifkin, who's right. the promoter of this event here. And uh, I got to tell you, with the weather being like it is today, Tommy, I wouldn't be surprised if there's at least 10,000 plus people here today. I would, I, would, I would think that, especially when it's for free. If it's free, they come. They certainly do. And uh, we're, we're fortunate enough to have Neville Chesters here again. I know that uh, we have an earlier interview coming out with Neville. Neville was the road manager for Cream. 
He was a road manager for Jimi Hendrix. Um, he's, Who? he's just incredible, Tommy. You had a pleasure of being with him and Roger Daltrey a couple of, a couple of months ago. Yeah, we spent the whole day and night with the Who over at the Coliseum. We watched. Uh, we had dinner with them. We uh, did, we had uh, the sound check, an hour and a half per- private sound check with three people in the Coliseum. And uh, it was a night I'll never forget. Actually, I uh, did a column on it in uh, Village Magazine this month. Uh, Jim Savalli. Yes, pick that up. It's a good article. It was a great day, and uh, and I couldn't think of spending it with a better guy than Neville Chester's. I mean, the guy has, you know, road manager for Hendrix, Cream, The Who, worked with the Beatles on uh, Sgt. Pepper's album, uh, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, James Taylor, The Beatles, uh, Led Zeppelin, you name it. He's worked with them. The guy is an icon amongst the icons, and we have him with us today. And uh, it, it's a delight to have Neville. He's, he's a great guy and a great person for rock and roll, that's for sure. We're going to be streaming live here. If, in case you don't get a chance to watch it live, obviously you can watch it on this film. And, uh, Tommy, we'll probably be broadcasting this on your show, the Maverick Soul Hour Monday night. Yeah, well, that sounds good to me. I would actually want, I'd like when we're done with this little interview here that Vicky maybe could pan around and check out this castle over here. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, you know, she asked me if it was for sale. You see, this is about women. <laughs> I don't know. What is it, women in castles? That, that's probably just the, uh, the, the servants' quarters over there. I think she just wants to see me with Beautiful. one of those outfits on, you know, those 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 silver outfits with I, the, that I lift my thing up I, with the sword that comes out? I, yeah, I think that sword. turns her on. You know, you got the sword that, that comes out, uh, whatever the hell it is. <laughs> All right, hey, listen. We're going to cut it short real quick. We're going to go talk to some people and uh, We're going to keep the Woodstock vibe going. We're going to have all day. We'll be interviewing people all day. Some of the acts that are coming off stage and some people just wandering around in a daze because it's Woodstock, Stay baby. Stay tuned. We'll be right we'll back see you. after this message. I am Tom Mealy. I'm with Madhouse TV. I'm here with Tommy Moore. We're the hosts of Madhouse TV, the Maverick Soul Hour. And we're here with a little bit of an icon. Uh, we're here at the uh, Woodstock Festival here in Sands Point. Tommy, tell us a little about who's with us today. All right. Well, we got my man here, Neville Chesters, for you that don't know, was a, a road manager for Jimi Hendrix, Cream, and The Who. Now, Neville wasn't at the original Woodstock. I was, but Neville wasn't, but Neville was at Monterey Pop. So, Neville, how does it feel to get back and get to Woodstock now? Yeah, well, I finally am doing it now, right? You dragged me out. You, 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 like Pete said, somebody pulled a chain and flushed me out. That's Pete Townsend he's talking about, which we've just recently seen with Neville. We spent the day with The Who. But uh, today we're in beautiful Sands Point, New York. We're looking at Connecticut across the sound here. And uh, we're going to have some great music. And Neville is an icon amongst all the rock icons in the world. And uh, it's an honor for Madhouse to have him with us again, because we always have him. And do uh, you have anything you want to tell the people out there? Just that these guys here are, are the greatest. They are really, really good. Madhouse TV, definitely watch it. It's worth it. <laughs> and there you have it, live with the Madhouse, me and Mr. Mealy and Mr. Neville Chesters. We're going to be uh, going around. We're going to be doing some interviews, so stand by. We'll be right back after this. You're watching Madhouse TV. We are here with the Madhouse with Mr. Steve Trietta. Trietta, you sure it's uh, Trietta and it's not Triota? Road manager for the Don Jean Godshaw Band. And what are you doing on it, uh, today here? You're doing it. I'm helping out Neverland Productions, which is Scott Vid, uh, help set up the whole festival, the stages, the uh, front of house, the hospitality, and uh, be running the stage for him tonight. Very cool. And Steve, it's, it's well, like a lot of people coming in. Yeah, we're expecting about 2,000 people tonight. Let me ask you a question. What got you started in this? Um, well, I was doing some free load-ins, helping out, uh, volunteering for the new riders at Purple Sage. And uh, um, the road manager at that time for the Donna Jean Band was uh, Anthony Delgado. And he came up to me outside while I was smoking a cigarette. And he said, well, who are you? I see you all over the place. I said, well, you know, I know the new riders. I know a couple other bands and this and that. And he said, hey, you want a job? He goes, uh, we're going out on the road with Donna Jean. We're going to be promoting a new CD. Uh, the next day he called me and uh, he offered me a job as a roadie. Wow, that's exciting. I got to tell you, so so this this big festival here tonight, I mean, how did this all start? Um, I believe Rich Rifkin, Rich Rifkin is the um, promoter for this festival, and uh, he's doing about 12 or 13 festivals this year. Uh, he did a couple last year, and they really uh, did well, and uh, he went to roll with it this year. Sounds good. Tommy, what do you think? I think uh, it's shaping up. It's looking like a lot of people getting here, and uh, the, the weather is beautiful. We're looking out across the sound at Connecticut. Beautiful day. Good day for music, right? 
Absolutely. What could be what Absolutely. could what could be bad? Uh, looking forward to a great time today, guys. Yeah. All right. And we want to thank you for all your help that you've given us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Tom, okay. And uh, watch us on Madhouse TV. We'll be right back after this. Welcome to Madhouse TV. I'm Vicki and I'm Janine. And we're here at the Sands Point Reserve getting ready to watch a Woodstock reunion concert. It's been a beautiful day. The sky is clear. We're going to hear some really good jams and music. And uh, we're also actually wondering whether we should buy this castle behind us. I say we do. And I'm already claiming Tom and I are going to be staying in the tower. I'll my, take my Tom. I'll take the east wing. So we'll, we'll work it out and we'll share it. I'll take the east wing. My Tom can take the west wing. We'll meet in the middle. <laughs> I think we're going to be in the basement, Tom. This is going to be a wonderful day, though, for us at the Madhouse TV. Thank you to Rich Rifkin for putting this all together. And uh, hope you enjoy the show. Peace.
beautiful, beautiful day. Congratulations to Rich Rivkin on a great event. Um, it's an honor to be on any stage that has the name Woodstock associated with it. Um, you know, very proud to be here. Um, 44 years ago, they put on a concert, and um, the concert was all about the music. The music is what it's all about. And we have some great performers here. Um, I'm here with my friends from Madhouse TV. We're going to be going uh, live streaming this to the world. And um, also Tommy Moore, who's with uh, Madhouse, writes for my magazine, the Village Connection magazine. And there's a little article in here about Neville Chester's. For those of you who don't know who he is, you can catch it here um, at thevillagechestermagazine.com. So without further ado, it's my honor to introduce my new friends and family from Madhouse TV and a special guest, Neville Chester's. Wow. Hey, everybody, thanks for coming down here today. Let me see if I can raise this up a little bit. I'm Tom Mealy from Madhouse TV. Man, I haven't seen this much tie-dye since my wife washed my whites and her red sweater. There's a lot of tie-dye out there today. This is great. Um, if any of you don't know, we are filming this live. We're streaming live right now, and it'll air on the Maverick Soul Hour on Madhouse TV Monday. We are streaming right now in 72 countries. So uh, put your smile on. We're going to be coming around there a little later today and uh, doing some interviews. But uh, at this time, I'm going to introduce my partner here at Madhouse TV who knows this uh, young gentleman personally and has been with him uh, pretty much uh, a lot of his career. He, I know he doesn't look that old, but, uh, but uh, Tommy Marr, everybody, from Madhouse TV. Thank you. All right. How's everybody doing? Well, I'm, I'm one of those guys that was at the original Woodstock. I had the privilege of being there, and I've seen all the great acts, and i got to give my hat off to this band that just played. It was great. Loved the uh, cocker tune. Um, just so you know, if you guys don't know this gentleman that's standing next to me here, he is a legend amongst all the rock icons in the world. He has been the road manager for Jimi Hendrix, um, The Who, Cream. He's worked with Zeppelin. He did the Beatles album. Um, which one? Sergeant Peppers with the Beatles. He's done it all. James Taylor, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. You name it, this man has done it. He was the first human being to ever even lift a 100-watt marshal up. The first person. Pete Townsend had to make it, so Neville had to go down and get it. So, uh, Neville, first of all, we'd like to welcome all you guys and thank Rich Rifkin for having us here. Thank you so much. It's a beautiful thing, and anything with Woodstock is good with me because I have a page also called The Woodstock Guru on Facebook. If you want to join me, it's all about Woodstock and just sending some good vibes and good spirits out to everybody. So... My man right here, give it up for an icon, Mr. Neville Chesters. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to say. Um, I don't do this stuff. I mean, I put this stuff together, but I don't do it. Um, but uh, I'm friendly with Tom and Tommy. They've been great to me. I've been on the show. The show's great. It's picking up, I mean, thousands of viewers now. And uh, they're involved in the festival here. They're involved in a bunch of stuff. Um, there's a magazine with a lot of information. The village. Oh, the village. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, that's it. I'm embarrassed. Uh, oh, he's not embarrassed. No, well, tell us a little about uh, what is one of your funniest moments with one of these rock icons that you've had the pleasure of being with. Uh, hold on, uh, hold on, uh, hold on. You know, my favorite story he ever told me was that he was sitting in a car with <laughs> Jimi Hendrix, Paul McCartney, no, not Hendrix, not, no. Jimmy Page, and. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Lennon. John Lennon, and uh, they were doing things in the back of the car that had Neville laughing for hours. So, yeah. yeah. So Neville, what was that that they were doing back there? Come on, let's let out some secrets. Uh, we, we didn't do drugs, I can tell you. No, um, uh, Brian Epstein, the Beatles road man, uh, the Beatles road man, the Beatles manager, bought a country house, and we had this weekend party. And at one point, um, I somebody said to me, "Come on, we're going to sit and have a smoke." And we, we went into John's roles, and there were like six of us, and I know that John was there, I know McCartney was there, and I know Clapton was there, and I have no idea who else was there. And we sat in there talking for uh, an hour. Token? And token. Token. Is that, is that an English word? Or, I don't know. That's good. Oh, no, that's a, that's a token for the subway, or the tube. Oh, I, Yes. Anyway, um, yeah, there's a million of them, and uh, they'll be on a DVD one day, I think. Um, 
All right. Well, they listen. Let's hear it for Neville here. Uh, listen, Neville's going to be back in the VIP tent. If you want to get an autograph for him, he's doing some autographs back there. And, uh, you know, he's probably one of the last of the original managers of uh, so many uh, incredible bands out there. And I want to thank Jim Savalli from, uh, um, from uh, Village Connection Magazine for uh, helping us put this together. My partner, Tommy, my lovely wife, Vicky, who's back here, and Janine, who's over there on camera, and the entire staff up at Madhouse TV. Guys, tune in and uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you very much. Oh, if you feel the groove, you can dance. You can dance.
you guys are too kind, too kind out here in Sands Point. Too kind. Too much love, too much love. Thank you so much. Party's just beginning. Woodstock Revival just begun. Here we go, check it out. Milagro Percussion. Wow. You know, and I got to apologize. That's a small little, is it tidbit? Snippet. Snippet? Tidbit? Snippet. Snippet. I like tidbit. That's it's, a cracker. That's not a cracker. Yes, it is. A tidbit is not a cracker. Yes, it is. It's a cheese cracker. No, Tidbits. it's not. Picky, isn't it? It's not a tidbit. Is it a tidbit? Yes. Well, then that's a small cracker <laughs> tid of what you got. Uh, I didn't say, you know what, don't start. <laughs> See, this is what he does. This is why I don't do the show with him that often. But anyway, that was a small little... Tidbit. Tidbit of, uh, of what it was like over there. It was phenomenal, and we do apologize. This is the first time Madhouse had a chance to film something like this, so we're kind of getting our feet wet with it, and uh, we will we, assure you. I thought you, we captured the vibe very well. You know, and, we uh, did. There was some things I'm going to do different the next yeah. time. You know, I want a lot more interviews with the people. I think that that's important. But um, anyway, listen, we're going to end this again. We want to do a special thanks to, obviously, Sandpoint uh, Reserve. For, for having us, the, the caterers that were so gracefully uh, put all the food. Oh, special, the woman that came with the potato chips. Lena. Well, Lena. Lena, my love, thank you so much for the potato chips and the dip. It was absolutely outstanding. What's she saying? She's yelling at us in the other room. Leslie. 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 No, but there was I a Lena. I told you it was Leslie. Lena was the other one. It wasn't that, Lena. No, no, I have a pa paper in my see, that's to like, give a shout out to Lena. That's like the tidbit. Leslie, thank you for the potato chips. That was wonderful. And uh, obviously, the, the food guy was there. I want to give a shout out to the guy that came in the 1969 uh, um, Chevelle Super Sport. Um, great. I'm sorry we couldn't get you on the interview maybe next time. And, uh, and of we course, we got a lot of t shirts too. Mr. Rich Rivkin. We couldn't do this without him, Rich. Thank you so much from all of us here at Madhouse. Stay tuned for the Tommy Marr Show. Switch the channel Hold to on, the Maverick no. Soul Hold Hour. On. And we have one more we thing. We have a very special clip coming up. I'll tell you, for you guys, and especially you Woodstock people, and it doesn't really have to be Woodstock people, but especially the Woodstock people, you've got to watch this video of Soul Sacrifice. 
incredible, incredible, this, this, incredible. We, we have to let them know. This was shot by Janine the, out of her camera. Little cam crew. And, uh, you know, we wanted to add it on. It wasn't something that we edited. So, you know, we're going to say goodnight. Stay tuned for the Maverick Soul Hour coming up at 8 o'clock on Madhouse TV. Just switch your link over to uh, the Maverick Soul Hour. you got a great guest coming up. Who is it? Porch Groove. Porch Groove. Stay great tuned. Band. We'll be right back. Little soul sacrifice. Eight o'clock, we'll be right back. And hang on there, we'll be right back. Tommy Marr from Madhouse TV. He's here today. He's videotaping this. He's going to put this on his uh, television show. Over 72 countries. This is called Soul Sacrifice. And he was there. He's got a rock. He's got a rock on his desk. That he brought home from that event.
more numbers than them, girls.